Does fasting cause eating disorders like anorexia nervosa or bulimia? That's a real concern, and we're going to tackle that question coming right up. When we talk about eating disorders, we're concerned about two main ones. Anorexia nervosa is a disease where people have an intense fear of gaining weight. It's also a psychological disorder of distorted body image. These people think that they're very overweight even though they're very underweight. And this leads them to undergo extreme diets, including fasting, and sometimes they lose so much weight that they can die. Bulimia is binging and purging. So binge eating is where people eat very, very large quantities of food without any control. They can't stop themselves and then purge afterwards, either vomit or use laxatives. And both are extremely serious, so there's a persistent concern in some circles that fasting can actually cause these um, disordered eating. Fasting is really a tool. That is, it can help or it can heal, depending on how you use it. The reason why people worry about fasting is that they worry that this period of acute deprivation when you don't eat may provoke some overcompensation afterwards. So people are going to eat more or they're going to be drawn to very high calorie unhealthy foods and therefore the net effect is going to be negative. There's also some worry that people will deplete themselves of tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin, which is a reward hormone. So then people, once they start eating again, will simply overeat. And that's uh, another concern that may undo any good that the fasting period did. There's been two randomized controlled trials of diets, not fasting, but diets, to see whether dieting can cause eating disorders. The first of these was called non-dieting versus dieting treatment for overweight binge eating women. And what they did was they randomized two groups of women to a diet versus those who are just told to eat how they normally eat. And when they looked afterwards and scored them, their conclusion was both treatment groups reduced their binge eating scale scores. In other words, the bulimia, which is the disease, persisted whether or not they were on a diet or not on a diet, and over time it tended to get better. The second randomized controlled triad of diets was called the psychological consequences of weight gain prevention in healthy premenopausal women. So the study design was very similar. They randomized two groups of women they gave them a diet, the other group they didn't give a diet, and what they did was they looked at whether or not there was any evidence of eating disorders after the dieting group. Their conclusion? The current study found no evidence of negative psychological sequelae of participating in a behavioral lifestyle change program. In other words, these two um, randomized controlled trials, which are the gold standard of clinical medicine, showed that if you tell people to go on a diet or use a diet plus lifestyle changes such as exercise, this doesn't increase their risk of anorexia nervosa or bulimia. That is, the People who have these diseases do tend to diet and they do tend to do fasting, but doing a diet and doing the fasting doesn't cause the disease in the first place. And there's also trials on bulimic patients. And this study was called Effects of Acute Food Deprivation on Eating Behavior in Eating Disorders. So this was a little different from those other two studies in that they took bulimic patients who have been diagnosed with the disease. So we knew they had the disease already, and then they gave them a diet. Some they didn't. And at the end of the day, they compared whether things got worse when they went and followed a diet, or they didn't change. Their conclusion, a period of acute food deprivation did not trigger marked eating pathology as evidenced by overconsumption. In other words, 
if you have actual diagnosed bulimic patients and you severely restrict their diet or do fasting, those people don't do any differently than if you didn't diet. They didn't eat more, they didn't overcompensate. So fasting and dieting in this group of patients also didn't seem to have much effect. In fasting, there's been a couple of other studies. This one was called Effect of an Acute Fast on Energy Compensation and Feeding Behavior in Lean Men and Women. What they did is they took a group of lean men and women, not with any type of eating disorders, but they, they put them on a 36-hour fast. After the fast, they let them eat whatever they want, and they measured what they ate and also how many calories they ate and so on to see whether or not there was any evidence of overeating or binge eating or anything like that. Their conclusion was that these data suggest that a 36 hour fast did not induce a powerful unconditioned stimulus to compensate on the subsequent day. What they found was that if you don't eat for 36 hours, which is a whole day, like from dinner on Monday, skipping the whole day on Tuesday, and then eating again on Wednesday, people did eat slightly more at the meal following their fast, but not nearly enough to compensate for that period of under eating. So overall, they were still eating less than if they ate their normal, usual diet. And there was no evidence that there was any anorexia and there's no evidence of binge eating behavior afterwards, which is very reassuring. And most recently, there was a study called, Does Short-Term Fasting Promote Pathological Eating Patterns? This is probably the closest study we have to what modern people are doing in terms of intermittent fasting. What they did was they took healthy young adults, average age was 18, and the average body mass index was 24.2. So not overweight, healthy, young, they didn't have anorexia, they didn't have, nervo uh, uh, they didn't have bulimia, and there was uh, both men and women in the group, and there was also Caucasians as well as other people of other races. They put them on a 24-hour fast, and then they measured them afterwards to see if there was any evidence of binge eating behavior over compensation or anything like that. And reassuringly enough, their conclusion was fasting does not significantly predict increases in eating disorder behaviors. There, we can draw three conclusions. One. Fasting does not cause eating disorders. Most of the studies seem to point in the same direction. If you were to only look at association studies, you will, you, you will find that there is an association between eating disorders and fasting because people with eating disorders like anorexia will fast. But when you put them to the test to see if fasting also causes eating disorders, well, it doesn't seem to in any way. And we have a long history to back us up. If you think about intermittent fasting, people have been doing this for thousands of years. It was mentioned in the Bible. Most major religions in the world have periods of fasting. So it's not like we've never done this before. Literally billions and billions of people fast on a regular basis at various times through the year. And yet eating disorders are still very rare, except in teenage girls. The second main conclusion is that fasting does not cause excessive overeating or compensation. This is always the big worry and this is what people had always been told. If you skip a meal, you're going to eat so much at the next meal that it's going to wipe out all your benefits. The longer you fast, the less likely this is. It's very difficult to pack in all the food that you're going to eat in an entire day into a single meal. There's only so much we can hold. Our stomachs are only so big. After you eat a certain amount, you're full. You don't want to eat anymore. So it's not the case that you are definitely going to overeat afterwards. 
Lots of people who skip their meals just eat normally afterwards. Just like if you got very busy um, you, you know, doing something and you worked through lunch. It doesn't mean that you're going to go crazy and eat like crazy afterwards. Most people who do that will just eat a normal dinner afterwards. They'll just skip their lunch and their body will take the calories it needs from its body fat. And that's why you don't need to overeat afterwards. And the third thing is that fasting is a tool. You have to use it only in the appropriate conditions. In no circumstance would I tell a underweight, malnourished 15-year-old girl who is at incredibly high risk of anorexia nervosa to undergo fasting. That's just asking for trouble. But if I have a 400 pound man on high doses of insulin with type 2 diabetes, well, he's at almost zero risk of anorexia nervosa. So the fasting may actually save his life, whereas the fasting for the underweight girl may actually put her life in jeopardy. But the tool itself is the intermittent fasting. It's just the same in both cases. But it's the knowledge that you bring about who the appropriate person is and what the appropriate condition is to use it that's important. And that's why you always have to go to the right sources of information. Thanks for joining me today. If you're interested in some fasting tips or how to use fasting, you can check out my other videos. I'll see you next week.